Good to see you. Happy Friday. Happy, happy Black Friday and happy Thanksgiving. <clears throat> All righty. So, everybody. Last weekend, I was in, where was I? I was up in the Green Bay, Wisconsin, De Pere, Wisconsin, and we had a good time up there at KK Sewing Vac. Wonderful people up there. If you're in the Green Bay area or visiting, make sure you stop in. They have a store in Appleton and in De Pere, both. Be sure to check them out. Awesome people. Uh, hi, Debbie. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. Hi, Diane. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> there are some good cells out there today. If you were able to brave the crowds, it's, oh my goodness, it was, it wasn't bad later in the day, but earlier it was pretty rough. So, <clears throat> hi Judy. Let's see here. I am looking at my other screen. Okay. Hi, Mark. Hi, Linda. Hi, Lorna. How are you tonight? Happy Black Friday. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hi, Pat. Hi, Margaret. Happy Thanksgiving. <clears throat> everybody, I'm home until January, so I've got so much fun stuff planned. We're going to be doing a lot on camera here. So, Tighten your seat belts. It's going to be a wild and bumpy ride for the next several weeks for the whole month of December as far as that goes. Now tomorrow at noon I will be live continuing with episode three of my Quilts in Italy series. We are making the from the K Facet book Quilts in Italy. We are making our fourth quilt top the blue and white quilt top. So that'll be a lot of fun. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Gail. Hi, Georgia. Well, Georgia, I have to tell you, I did the same. I didn't sleep in, but I had this deal come across my email, so I purchased it and then went and picked it up in the store. It was really a great deal. So I couldn't miss out on that one. Yes, Lorna, I will be at Flash in for St. Patty's Day, March of 2023 for Surger Camp. Yes. Hi, Mia. Welcome. Hi, Patricia. Oh, from Colorado. I love, I miss Colorado. I really do. I love Colorado. Let's see what time it's getting to be here. Everybody, it is now 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we are going to get started. I am still recovering from all my travels, so I'm taking it a little easy tonight. I am going to do, I'm going to show you what I've been working on. I've been busy over the last couple of days making some some holiday gifts and I'm currently working on trying to get all of my fabric painting squares done so that I can get those framed because those are going to be quilted and framed and those are going to be gifts as well. Hi Mike and Linda. Hi Janelle. Hi Tammy. So everybody happy belated Thanksgiving Day. We did not have turkey yesterday. We actually had a spiral cut ham instead. And it was really good, but boy howdy, I'm already I'm already tired of the leftovers. Let me just put it that way. Oh my goodness. But it was it's all good. It's still good. So we'll be eating on that for a couple of more days. <laughs> and let's see here. I made I made cranberry sauce and mashed potatoes and what else did we have? 
um, baked sweet potatoes with marshmallows and brown sugar and walnuts, um, green bean casserole, homemade yeast rolls, um, or something else. What is it? We have um, a Dutch apple pie as well for dessert this year and something else. I'm missing something. Oh, I had my my uh, ghee buttered, clarified buttered corn. And I still think I'm, yes, um, cornbread, some cornbread stuffing, even though we didn't have a turkey, still had a side of stuffing. Hi, Mary. Welcome. It's good to see you. Oh, my hi, Mary. <laughs> and hi, Chris. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. So what we're going to be starting off with tonight, I'm going to show you something I've been working on. And I'm sure most of you have probably already made these before, but this is kind of a classic timeless gift. Here's just some gift ideas, and I will be doing videos on my method to do this. But here are some bowl, a set of bowl cozies, okay? These are all in batiks, so there's your, your average sized one for just your regular ice cream or cereal or soup bowl. And then a size up right there. And of course they are reversible. You can see here these two. They're the same fabric, but they're just reversed. And just to reverse them, all you do is turn them inside out. I know y'all, most of you have probably made a ton of these, but let me tell you, these are always fun to make. And it's a great way to use up some fat quarters that you have no other use for. <laughs> and then here's a larger one. This one is actually for a pie pan or uh, we have a Fiesta pie plate with fluted edges and this fits it perfectly. And then there's one more I'm gonna make and it's for a dinner plate. So these are really great, all 100% cotton fabric and thread and batting that you can just put your dish in to reheat stuff and just stick them right in the microwave as you're doing that. Upcoming videos on that. And then I fat saw something that I just had to make. And I don't have them stuffed just yet, but I've been making fabric chickens. Aren't these adorable? Oops, almost dropped it in my, my coffee. Look at those, aren't those cute? These are, will be pin cushions. I have my walnut shells ordered to stuff them with. But yes, pretty cool. And most of these, most of these I have made with just five inch charm squares. This was actually two quilt blocks right here. And this is just some fabric that I sewed in and then snipped with my scissors for its comb and its little beak there. Pretty cool stuff though, a lot of fun to make, fast to make. Upcoming videos on that, there's another one. There's its tail feathers right there. And this cute little green one. So, lots of fun things coming, coming up. But tonight what I'm gonna focus on, I have to get these done if I'm gonna get them out in time for Christmas. And that is, <clears throat> That is, I'm going to swap my camera over. Okay. I'm going to swap my camera over. Where is that one at? There it is. There we go. Hello there. I have embroidered these out on my machine. <clears throat> and I'm coloring them in with fabric markers. Okay, so hence the fabric painting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mia, I will do a video. They are super easy to make. And yes, I will have a pattern on them. I love the roosters too. And you can, instead of putting fabric up here, instead of putting fabric up here for its comb, you can put yarn in there. I mean, there's, your imagination is the only, <clears throat> is whatever you can imagine to use. It's a great way to use up little scraps of this and that and all that fun stuff. So, let me get this one back up and this one back up. Yes, Judy, they would also make really great pattern weights, absolutely. So what I'm gonna do is this right here. We are going, 
I've almost got this one done. And once I get them colored in, I'm gonna let them cure for 72 hours, hit them with a hot iron, then I'm gonna quilt them and frame them. And those are gonna be someone's Christmas gift that they can then hang on the wall or <clears throat> on a countertop or whatever they'd like to do. So I have um, four different brands of markers that I'm using. These are Edding, E-D-D-I-N-G. Let me see here, get that in the camera. There we go. And those of you that have Berninas will recognize these because these fit in the pin holder on the on a Bernina, <clears throat> the Bernina attachment for the 790s or the 880s, where it'll, the paint feature attachment where it will draw on your fabric in the hoop with markers. That's why I have so many of these left over from my Bernina days. And then these are Sharpie, Sharpie fine point fabric markers. You can get a pack of these with a ton of colors in them. These are Arteza, I really like these. It's double tipped, there's a fine point, and a wide point, blunt point. I really like those as well. And then I also have dime markers, which are these right here from Dime. These are super great also, love these. It's a, like a medium fine point, so it's a, definitely a different size brush tip, and that's kind of a great thing to have as a good variety with different size tips on it to get into the effect that you want. This particular design here, all the black is stitching. <clears throat> it's just like coloring. I, For lack of a better word, it's like coloring in a color book. You don't want to press down hard when you're doing this. So all you really are going to do is just make a series of, of strokes. A series of, of, of gentle brush strokes as we're coloring in. So I'm going to do this one here next. And I'm not going to do it in green. I've been doing green leaves around. I'm not going to color the whole thing either. But <clears throat> I'm going to put in... I need some brown and gold in there, I think. So let's see, that could work. And I keep all my markers. This is an empty tin that tea bags came in. And this makes a great little container to keep all your markers, your fabric markers in. That's a great way to have them right at your fingertips. So there's a brown and kind of an orangey gold there. Let's see what else I've got here. Get some colors set out. These are way too orangey for what I'm going to use right there. And there. And then I'm going to use some red with that, I think, as well. So when you're laying down color <clears throat> with fabric markers, you want to start with your lightest, your, your lighter, uh, color values first and build up to something dark because you can't you can't start dark and then lighten it up with a fabric marker when you're using that to paint with <clears throat> excuse me so let me get my window back up here did I lose a window I did let me get my Facebook window back up hopefully that is still going on just a second, everybody. There we go. We're still up, I think. We're still up and running. There we go. Okay. And... Okay. I'll keep an eye on that and restart it if I have to. Okay, everybody, we're going to get started with this one and get this one done. Hi, Sarah. Had a great day. I hope you did as well, Sarah. <clears throat> okay, so. Let me pull one more thing out here. There we go. Okay. okay. And. All righty. Okay, now I'm good to go. <laughs> okay, 
So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start, I'm going to color these, these cute set of leaves right here. As you can see, I've got some dark red berries here, so it needs it needs a, another another colorway in there, in my opinion, for it to look just right. So that's what we are going to do next. Okay. And we're, I'm just gonna start laying down some color, but I wanna go with something lighter first. Let's see what this one looks like. Definitely brown. I mean, it's a very chocolatey brown looking color. I'm going very lightly so I can change my mind if I want to. I'm gonna go very light with this color right here. This is a color number, these pins here, these Edding pins, these are actually made in Germany. And I'll tell you, I got a really great deal on them when I bought them. I actually found these, a big lot of these on um, eBay quite a few years ago. And I bought, the, bought all that they had in one big lot. And I got it at a very reasonable price. Okay. So I'm just going to lay down some color, a l very light coloring in between these lines here to give me a little bit of a base tannish cocoa light brown color. But then I'm going to add some red highlights to it. I think that would really look good. And a couple, one more here. This is very relaxing to do. It also really stirs those creative juices that everyday life can just really zonk us out on being super creative and something we like to do. Okay, so there's that. And I'm gonna bring my camera down a little bit lower so you can get a better look at this, maybe. Okay. Okay, there we go. I think you can get a better look now. Let me look at my one window here so I can see what the heck I am doing. <sighs> Just a second. There we go, okay. Okay. And I'm working on these right here. Right here is what I'm working on. So as you can see, I've used this marker and I've just lightly laid in a little background color. And I'll answer any questions once I get done with this area right here. So I'm gonna pull in this one. This is uh, Edding also, color number two. It's a red. Let's do a little dab right here and see what that looks like. I'm not covering the whole thing. I'm just putting it right up against the edge of one of those veins. And that way I have both colors coming through. Yeah, I dig that. And yes, as long as it's wet, those colors will blend a little bit, which is always a good thing. And what happens when we do it like this, it actually adds a little bit of a highlight because you're seeing both colors plus a little bit of the background fabric that kind of acts as a highlight for all of this. Okay. One more over here.
you know, and yeah, I could have filled all of these little areas in with different colored thread and stitches, but you know, all of these machines from Baby Lock have beautiful designs like this that are just perfect to do coloring with, to do some fabric painting with. Lots of fun. Okay. And let's see here. So next I do want to do these little, I think these are some type of seed pods. So I'm gonna start with something really light, like this color right here. And I'm gonna do these seed pods next, okay? So this is an Arteza and it has a fine point and a wide point. So I'm going to do the wide point. Because it'll just lay down a little bit of base color. And notice I'm not letting it just stay in one place so that really soaks in deep. Because I'm I'm wanting to use it like I'm actually coloring with maybe a pastel chalk pencil. And that's kind of the effect I'm after right here. I don't want solid solid deep saturated colors from these because I want it to look like it's actually been drawn and highlighted like you would in a sketchbook. Okay, there's a little bit of color. So I'm going to put that one back to the side now get the caps back on it. We're going to go up to something just a wee bit darker. Let's see here. I think we'll use this Sharpie here. I'm going to just follow along some of the black veins in it with this one. It's a very fine tip, as you can see. I don't want a whole lot of color in it. This will add some nice detail to it. Then I am going to add just a little bit more, one more shade of color to this before I call it done. that one. Now I want something <clears throat> I'm gonna hot, more like a highlight. I'm going to use this really bright yellow. You can see how bright that is. That's an editing number five. This will give it a whole nother tonal value. Lots of fun. Hi, Judy. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> Let me check my, okay. Just checking my, uh, my chat windows here. Okay. So I feel like it still needs a little bit more. So we are going to add just a touch hint of this red to it, right down to its throat. Right in there. There we 
we go. Just a little bit of highlight with that red. Pretty. Okay. I think these two leaves right up here. Let's see here. Right here. I think I have to move my camera up a little bit. Right there at the end of my finger. These two leaves right here need to be done. It needs a little bit of something right there. And just by going from one leaf to the next and just picking a slightly different color value of the, the, fabric, the fabric paint can really add a lot of nice contrast and movement <clears throat> to your piece. Okay, you know what? We're gonna do a little bit more with that. Add a little bit more color onto this spray. It's really subtle and it really does look nice. There we go. This one I'm going to make darker, the spray right next to it. It's looking good. This is another area for those little red berries like I have right here. So there's a, just a tiny repeat of this. I think this is the one I used. If not, it's okay. It's a little dab of color there. That's where those really nice fine point markers come in, come in handy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see here. Let's see some more right over here. Get one with a finer point on it. There we go. That's good. Okay, it's all of those. See another leaf that needs to come to life. It's right here. good and one right here as you're coloring you'll actually see <clears throat> these little areas kind of pop out and they'll say to you color me I need some color please give me a little bit of color
almost got this one done, everybody. And that is, that is all I'm gonna do to that one. No. Nope. Um, this little bud here and this one right here. Those are a combination of different shades of yellow and a pale, pale orange. So, go with my palest yellow to start right here. Right here. And what I do, I I like to put my brush towards the center of the flower if I'm doing flowers and pull it out to the end of the leaf. That's what I try to do. Some of that stuff is just so tiny right in there. There's no way you can get even a fine tipped marker down in there. <clears throat> okay. He's in a different shade now. We'll lay in a little bit more color. Okay. I'm gonna do one more. Let's get even a brighter yellow. And then I want a little bit of color in the very center. And I'll start out with a start with like a, a very light shade, a lighter shade of a hot pink. I'm just not going to press hard. I just want a hint of color in there. Then I'll end up with some dark, a darker, a darker red. So those two colors will kind of blend a little bit. Just not much in there that will actually take any color because it's mostly thread. And we're going to do this one here. This is rosewood, Arteza A204 rosewood. Much better. Get all those little flowers with the yellow leaves so the centers are close to the same. There we go. That works. I like that. I think I'm gonna call that one done, everybody. Then I'll get to quilt it and frame it and all that fun stuff. But yeah, there's one. That one is done. Yes. Let's raise that up a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna check the chat boxes for any questions or anything. Oh, let's see here. Hi, Sandy. Okay. So, I'm going to call that one done. Now, when I stitched this out, I did put this, um, this cutaway stabilizer on the back. So, that is something after it is quilted, I will be taking all, I will cut out cut off any excess right there. But that one, I'm gonna call that one done. That one is done. 
So the next one I'm going to do tonight is this one right here. It's a heart. Okay. And we now I don't think I'm gonna need my yellows on this one. <laughs> well, you never know. But I know I'm gonna need some reds. Just pick those out and put them on top. I know I'll be using them. <laughs> and I'm gonna put all my blues and greens over here in this other pile for right now. Here off to the side. There we go. Okay. There we go. You can see all those over there. And I'll be using some of these. This should be fun. I think this was a built-in design on the Solaris. I think. I'm pretty sure it was. And just so, let me just turn it this way. Because of the way I have the camera set up that way, it is not upside down for y'all. It will be upside down for me, but that's okay. It's all good. So there we go, stitched out in black. Black embroidery thread. Get some of my coffee here. So, I'm going to start with this, I think. Let me see what else I have over here. So these are dying colors here. Those would be good. There's the time red. Let's see how that goes. Okay. It's a hotter pink. Those two would go work well together. And here. Okay. So. You're going to get here's the one here's what I'm wanting. It's a very pale pink. See that? Very pale. That would be a good one to start with. And that's what I'm gonna do. So do 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 do. What do I want to highlight? I think this is kind of like a Zen doodle looking design almost, isn't it? <clears throat> So what I'm going to do, I am first going to do these little areas right here. Just going to outline, fill in between the lines, and these. Like I said, everybody, once you get done colorizing a piece of fabric like this, you really need to let it set for 72 hours and then hit it with a hot iron, no steam, and then it'll all your colors will be set and permanent and all that fun stuff. I would recommend putting a pressing cloth over them just in case any of the paint was not completely set and it would come off on the bottom of your iron. <coughs> Excuse me. That looks good. I like that. Let's see. <coughs> Goodness. Okay. So, I also think these two spiral, these are almost like a fractal also. <coughs> this one here, look at this. I'm trying to find similar areas so that I can have continuity for a color that I'm using. These are curved, just like this makes a big curve here.
And then over here are some as well. Kind of carry, keeping along with that theme that I got started. And I'm not going to color every entire part of this because I think it would just make it look way too busy. You could, just a matter of personal choice and preference. Then we come to that. One more right here. Okay, and this one right up here. It's kind of out. See how I'm kind of outlining it. And what's what will happen when you can pick out one element that's kind of <clears throat> that's kind of repeated throughout a design, and you stick with that colorway, it will actually it'll become it'll have a bring it together with continuity for these these shapes that I'm happen happen to be coloring right now painting there we go Okay. Okay. Put the cap on here and let that rest for a minute. Check in messages. Hi, Lisa. Well, you're fine, Lisa. I happen to be live right now. That is correct. <laughs> this will be recorded, everyone. You can rewatch it as many times as you want to. And wow, the light in my studio really makes this look orange, but it's not. It is red, everybody. <laughs> wow. I just saw that. Okay, so, 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 what are we going to do here? We are going to add this one. Oh, let's switch to a different color. I'm going to use this Arteza here with a wide tip, wider tip. Because I'm going to do this whole band right here. This is called Rosewood, this color. Rosewood. I think, I think it would look good if I brought some of this over to this area as well.
Yes, I am going to be doing some weaving and spinning videos. Be doing those live here in the upcoming, here over the <clears throat> holiday season. Just all kinds of fun things. Okay, that looks good. I like that. <clears throat> and I'm keeping that thing going. Let's see here. little teardrop leaves. And they're real small, you can just like not even make a brush stroke, just just like you're dotting an eye when they're really tiny like that. Puffin's in here on his couch snoring. <laughs> okay, it looks really cool. Let's see here. This is screaming for that treatment as well, this piece. It will go from there. There we go. It is coming together quite nicely. Yes, Lisa, this is a built-in design on the Solaris. <clears throat> Some of the other designs were built into the Altair and Meridian. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oops. And there we go. Okay. So next, 
What do I want next? I see here in the center of this area, there are some really fine spines coming out from the center. And that's what I am going to add a touch of color to. Let's see here. Got to put this color right over here. Got to be. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. I'm done with that color for now. So for right in here. There we go. And caps back on there. Hi, Christina. So, Phyllis, these are would all fit inside basically, and you can resize them to make them fit whatever block you would want. But these will make um, twelve by twelve. 12 inch by 12 inch blocks is what I could make them uh, rectangular if I wanted to but no these will probably cut these in to fit into like an 11 by 14 uh, photo frame this is what my plan is for this okay I'm just dying to use some of this hot pink here this fuchsia and that's what I'm going to use next got to have some some zippity out out to it I think let's see here mm -hmm. Ooh, do I want all that in there actually I think These little teardrops right in here. little seeds okay and let's see here <clears throat> Let's 
There we go. This will definitely be a focal point. <clears throat> That's for sure. Then these right here follow around. Pretty cool. Dig of that. Hi, Carol. Good to see you, Carol. Okay, I just, let me check for, oh, you're welcome, Phyllis. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. I'll get back in there and get that. Okay. Yes, that little piece right there, and that was this color. Here we go. This is definitely a hot pink, but you know, it needed something bright in it because these were just all kind of blending in together. And boy, how, boy, howdy that sure did brighten this side of that the heart shape up that's for sure <laughs> okay and these three little pieces here we kind of go along with that so we're, they're going to get it too Here we go. And let's see. And right in here. Doing okay, puppy? Mm. It's okay, Bobo. Okay. Here we go. Then, do, 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 do. Need to pull some of this color over to this side. Do these right here. Right here. <coughs> Do, 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 do. Got to think on, you know what? <clears throat> These tips would be perfect for that. Right there. That's good. 
Very good. Okay. Boy, and even though there's two different colors in there, they have just, after they dry it, those have dried a little bit. They just kind of blend together. So I'm going to fix that somehow. Let's see what happens when I put a white marker on this center part to try to change the color of it. And a little bit, not much. Not enough to really help, no. Didn't think it would, but you never know until you try. So, I could either go darker, or a completely different color. Let me think. Let me think. Let's do, let's see here. If I add blue to that red, I might get a purple. So let's see what happens. Yep, and it is kind of making it a grapey colored purple. I just wanted to contrast from the interior color of those petals, and this will do it. Don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there's a definite uh, color value difference now between this part and these little, the center coming out from the center, the little spikes. That looks oh so much better. And There we go. There we go. Okay. I like that. That was a, a good fix. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Let's see here. Lisa, this one here, I sized it up to this is a six by six inch ruler here. So it's about seven, seven and a quarter by six and a half. Six and a half, about seven and a quarter, because I sized it up to make it bigger. Yes. I did size it up. And let's see. I want. I'm going to have to add some lavender or lilac. This is lavender here. Let's see what this looks like. I can always make it darker. Let's see. I think. Oh, yeah. lavender right here. It looks very nice. In future fabric painting episode, we're going to experiment 
with these fabric paint and these markers and some alcohol, not the type that you drink, <clears throat> but it'll actually thin it out and maybe even make it run a little bit like a watercolor. We'll play with that one night. The purple looks, lavender, lavender looks really good with these different shades of purple, of pink and reds and fuchsias. Okay, I like how that turned out. That looks really nice. <clears throat> and yes, I'm going to add it probably a couple of more places. I think the inside of these swirls would make it would kind of bring that continuity to it. I may end up colorizing this whole piece before it's all said and done. Trying to get my 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 brush strokes just to follow the contours of this design. Just like if you were painting with oil paints or acrylics, you know the the direction you move your brush can really affect how everything bl uh, blends and actually help keep movement in a design that's penciled out like that. Okay. Then these little squiggly lines right here. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing right here. We did it here, so we should do it there. There's that continuity thing. This is the, the Arteza markers here. And if you've ever worked with artist medium, like a pastel or a chalk, on these large areas of fabric, it kind of has that look of, of you doing some shading in with a pastel or a chalk um, medium. Really looks nice. there on that one. Okay. And let's see here. This is, what color is this? Ube, U-B-E. That looks like almost a lie. This is lavender. That looks like a lilac. <clears throat> Corn 
flower glue. Probably will not use that. Let's see here. We're done with this one for right now. I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. We're going to do take this. This is more like a lilac. It's light enough. I can always darken it up. I want it, I think, on this piece right here. Yeah. Let me get the thicker end on it. The lighter brush. Here we go. I like that. It's a very grayed lilac. It's a very subdued lilac. I really like this one, this shade. Very good. I like it. Then these little gills right here. Starting to come together, everybody. Starting to come together. There we go. Okay, just a smidge of color right there. sometimes you're you look at something and it just says do this next and that's what happened here did not plan on doing this little area in this but I think it, it was just asking to have some color of this pretty lilac out, out here to this edge bring in the red there we go There we go. Now it's getting there. Do, 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 do. And hmm, <laughs> ooh, these little, this little center part here, I think would look great in that as well. And that is just what? Wait a minute. No, it's not. This here is. Moving right. 
right along. finish this little band here I'm on then I'll go check for any chat messages or anything like that okay really good. A little cap on back here. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I need a sip of my coffee. Okay. I do. I need a sip of my coffee, everybody. We are getting really far along on this one. I want to color some of this in. Let's see here. <coughs> Which one do I put? Oh, there's one I haven't used yet. I'm going to use this one here. This would be great to make. <clears throat> you could use this for a quilt block. You could frame it, which is what I'm going to do. It would also be great um, to make into a pillow, a throw pillow cover. I think it would anyway. So many ways. You could turn it into an applique. Totally. Okay. Let's see here. Then we're going to do something with this little flower in the center. I'm going to pull up one of the previous colors that I've used to bring some of this redness. And this is that rosewood. And let's see here. <clears throat> Put rosewood right in here.
looks good. I'm just gonna get that one too, this little dot right here. Okay. Then I'm going to put this pink. Am I? Right here. Yes. Yes. It's a little touch of pink in the center there. There we go. Very nice. And I need something around this over here. I need some more of this color over here in this area. Oh, I'm almost done with this. Almost done with this one. that works then let's see that fine tip on this lilac. <clears throat> there we go. Then right up here, this one. there then Hi, Terry, you're fine. <clears throat> Welcome. Okay, everybody, I have one more area to color. This little center area right here, and I'm gonna call this one done. Let's see here. What color do I want to put in there? Mm -hmm. I actually think it needs that to just pull it all all together and that's what it's going to be it's going to be this one right here Looks like little scales, they're kind of cool. 
<clears throat> so many different ways you could colorize this to give it even different effects from what it would normally look like. I'm trying to say there is no right or wrong way to do this. Whatever is pleasing to your eye, if you decide to do this. But there we go. That's another one done. Woohoo! I'm so excited. <laughs> so everybody, let me get back to my chat windows here. And let's see here. And <clears throat> I'm going to move my camera. Let's see, right there. Hello there. <laughs> Ooh, we. Let me make one more adjustment. There we go. Okay, so what this is going to be, everybody, I have, I'm going to quilt, layer this, quilt it. Here it is, the one that I just finished. I'm going to layer it and quilt it and then put it in a frame and that will be someone's Christmas gift. That's what I'm going to do with this one also. This will be quilted and then layered into a frame and be a Christmas gift. And I've got two more stitched out. There's this one. And this one, which I will probably finish up next week. So that is what I had for you tonight. Next Friday night, I will prob I think I'm going to share with you. Let's see. I'm going to share with you how to make my fabric chickens. These will be all stuffed by then. When I did made these, there's an opening in the bottom of them. So you can actually <clears throat> You can use these for decorative purposes, or these actually make wonderful pin cushions as well. So that's what I'll be doing next Friday night. We're going to make my chicken pin cushions. Woohoo! Be so much fun. <laughs> okay, Mia. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mia. So everybody, tomorrow at twelve noon Central Standard Time will be the next installment of Quilts in Italy. It'll be episode three. And we're going to get quite a bit of that quilt top piece tomorrow. I'll prob we'll probably I'll schedule another one for Sunday so we can get that quilt top finished up over this weekend. That is what my plan is. Hope everyone has had a wonderful holiday weekend and listen everybody i will see you all tomorrow and again on sunday that will start at 12 noon on both days and what i'll be doing is hold on let me just get my what i have completed on it so far that i've done on camera is this piece right here this is the center of the quilt that i'm working on and here it is right here okay Right here. Excuse me. Let's see. There we go. So this is it. This is the blue and white quilt from the Quilts in Italy. Just two fabrics. Fast and easy. So much fun. This will make a beautiful quilt. So that's what I'm working on Saturday, tomorrow, and Sunday. Here in the studio. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gosh, my sinuses and drainage, everybody. <sighs> but we will, I will see you all tomorrow at noon, Central Standard Time. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Have a joyous rest of your, of your Thanksgiving holiday weekend, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.